Three hundred is an unusual inclusion on this list, as while it definitely is based on a comic book, it's also based on a true story. The entire thing is based on a real war between the Persian army and Greece. Persia came in wanting to expand their empire and started taking over, and several of the city-states that made up ancient Greece warred with them, despite being vastly outnumbered. Sparta was a city made up almost entirely of warriors, and unable to get the political support needed to take the Spartan army to war against Persia, the Spartan king Leonidas took 300 men to war. He lost and was killed along with all 300 of his comrades, but he successfully stopped the Persian assault despite being betrayed by a fellow Greek who had told the Persians of a way to flank the Spartans. There had previously been a movie based on these events called 300 Spartans, but this particular movie is based on a comic treatment by Frank Miller, simply called 300. Now, the, both the book and the movie are mired in various historical inaccuracies. The one that made most people like to point out is that in the movie, the Spartans fight nearly in the nude, wearing only helmets and shields for armor and breaking ranks more often than not to fight in flamboyant acrobatic ways. In reality, the Spartans were good fighters mostly because of their technology, not their general bad acidness. They wore head-to-toe armor and fought in a perfect phalanx formation. But really, that's not that big of a deal. In the book, they were fully nude, using a technique called artistic nudity. It's basically saying that the armor is there, the artist just chooses not to draw it to show the human form, or in Frank Miller's case, he just really loves Wang. The film also glosses over a lot of the more negative aspects of Spartan culture, such as the Spartan warrior's final test, in which they must sneak out of the barracks and kill an unsuspecting slave. The entire movie comes off blowing smoke up Spartan ass, but I can't fault it too much for that. Everything is blown out of proportion to make the Spartans look manlier and more awesome, and their enemies look worse. The Persians are depicted as evil and wretched, and their leader Xerxes is depicted as being effeminate. The traitor, Ephialtes, is depicted as a monstrous crippled hunchback, when in reality he was a normal man, and in the final battle the resolution is narrated by a character who wasn't even there. So really, the whole thing is a blown-up war story told to a bunch of troops to rally them, and the narrator doesn't let the truth get in the way of a good story. That being said, I don't let the inaccuracies get in the way, but there are some logical flaws that bother me. For example, the whole thing with Ephialtes. In real life, he betrayed Sparta simply because he wanted to be on the winning side, and later found himself screwed when the Persians gave up their assault. Interestingly enough, he was later killed by a man for something completely unrelated, but his murderer was rewarded by Sparta anyway. In the film, his motivation is that, as a deformed cripple, he would have been killed at birth in Sparta, but he was removed from the city by his mother, who apparently didn't care much for infanticide something the movie points out was her mistake. Yeah, this is Sparta, all right. Anyway, despite the fact that these men would have gleefully thrown him as a newborn off a cliff and then went on to kill some more slaves, he hero-worships the Spartans and attempts to join the 300 and even tells Leonidas of the fatal flaw in his plan. So here you got a guy who is willing to fight for you, to die for you even, and knows something that you don't want anyone else knowing. The smart thing would have been to say, sure, come and fight with us. You're in the front. But instead, Leonidas pisses him off by telling him that his inability to raise a shield means he can't fight in a phalanx and therefore is useless. And to add insult to injury, he suggests that he help by hauling dead bodies off of the battlefield. What's hilarious is that Leonidas places a great deal of emphasis on the phalanx, which is barely used at all in the film, by the way, and the fact that each man is supposed to defend the man to his left with his shield, something that they never do in the film. Then, of course, Ephialtes goes and tells Xerxes, who gives the guy a lot more respect, by the way, all about the trail and how they can flank the Spartans. My other issue is with the movie is the way it was shot. The movie was shot without using any sets at all, completely done with blue screen and CGI backgrounds. This leads to some parts where the landscape looks really cool and artistic, and other parts where there's some crazy graphical glitches that pop up and it takes you out of the action. The editing is hip in the way that it uses a lot of slowdown and panning shots, something that I've become rather sick of. It's all very stylized and overblown, 
but it is at the least entertaining. I have to say, at the least, it is an improvement over the book, which was extremely dull. Overall, I did like 300 the first time I saw it, but I tend to like it less and less each time I watch it. This last time, I got bored halfway through, but it was still entertained by the battle scenes. I'll give it a 6 out of 10. If you watch it for the first time, you'll probably think that the score should be higher, but after a while, it just gets old.